Do you ever wonder why it takes so long to get a federal government job? I'm going to approach this question from the human resource perspective to try to explain it. First, we have to talk about that mentality of they had someone else in mind. You will hear people say this time and time again, they already had someone else in mind so I didn't stand a chance. And I think the reason why people say this to themselves and others is to justify why they didn't get the interview or why they did not get the job. In the vast majority of cases, this is not true. I would say in 90, 95% of the cases, this is not true. Usually the best qualified get hired. So job positions open up a lot of times without notice. This could be because of retirement or people are getting better offers. So this is something I encourage people I talk to as well. If you're applying, usually you're in a job searching campaign. So you're applying to two, three, four dozen different jobs and job offers will start to come in. So you might accept a GS 11, for example, but then a GS 12 comes in. So you're working three or four days at the job and then you decide to accept another higher GS offer. This happens too. And then there are people that do not give two week notices. You and I think that everyone's giving two week notices out here and that's simply not true. A lot of people will quit on a dime. Something will happen in their life and they'll decide, you know what, I can't keep working anymore or I need another job in a different location, so they'll just quit. Now HR needs approval to fill that job vacancy. They need to get permission and then they have to build the job announcement. So this is a longer process than a lot of people think. There's a lot that goes into a job announcement. And after the job announcement is created, people start applying, right? If it is a technical position, if it is an engineering position or something that requires a higher level of specialized experience, it cannot just be HR that reviews the application. They need to get a subject matter expert. So let's say it's an engineering or a medical position or even an IT position. The subject matter expert has to review those applications and this could take even longer. Why does it take longer? Well, you have to consider a lot of job announcements, they're receiving a hundred or hundreds of applications. So for the SME and the HR personnel to review all of these applications, you're looking at an average of three to four weeks. And while they're reviewing these applications, they have to cite specifically where in that resume makes that person eligible or qualified for the job. Where's the specialized experience? They have to mark that a lot of times. Then the top qualified individuals are sent over to the hiring manager. Sometimes this could be 10, 20, five. It depends on how many people actually applied. There are some cases, even in the DC area that I know of where only three people apply, where normally a job announcement would receive two, three, 400, some cases it's only three, it's only four or five individuals. Now from this point, the hiring official can pretty much determine who they want to actually interview. If you have a list of 10, maybe you wanna interview the top five. If only three people applied, maybe you interview all of them. Or if you're looking through the list and you do not like any of the candidates, you do not have an obligation to interview any of them. And at that case, you tell HR to go ahead and post it again. Out of that number of people that are being interviewed, you could have individuals from that internal agency applying. Not just that, it could be from the same office. So these are people that are pretty much known, right? I call them a known quantity. The hiring official knows that person's reputation. Now that could be a good thing for them or it could be a bad, right? Not everybody has a good reputation at work. So the individuals that are not known, the only thing the hiring official can go off of is the interview and the resume. You have to show through the interview and the resume why you are the best qualified applicant, even though they do not know you. If you have a strong federal resume and you have strong interview skills, then it will come down to a numbers game. At the end of the day, it will be a numbers game, meaning you have to apply more. So don't just apply five or 10 times, make it 50 times or even more, apply a hundred times and then you will have more of a selection on which agency you like the best so you can accept and decline job offers once you get to that point. Do not for a minute think that you're not good enough because you are not receiving referrals or you're not receiving interviews or the job offers are not coming. It more than likely, it is not you. You just have to apply more or it could be your resume. Look at the resume again. I keep saying that over and over and over again but I still get a lot of resumes that I review 
and they're nowhere near the standard that they need to be. You can be the best candidate for that job, but if you're not doing a good enough job communicating that you are best qualified, that you have value, that you have experiences, that you are a talented individual, if you're not going through the effort to do that, then you will never get the job. The job will always go to an inferior type of individual. Not saying inferior in a bad way, but somebody who's less experienced. It'll end up going to that person. But please do not continue to say they had someone else in mind. Now, if you're still applying to government jobs, or maybe you're thinking about starting to apply for federal government jobs, you might want to know what the best benefits that come with a federal government job. And if that interests you, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.